Otsukimi, and this is Observations with Otsu. <clears throat> um, new video for the week. Uh, it's a new week. I'm excited to be here, excited to kind of show you what's going on. As you guys may know, Observations with Otsu is a weekly observation of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we're going to kind of go over that. We usually go from the weekly time frame down and discuss that. Sometimes we go higher to two weeks, depends on the context, right? So um, that's... That's really pretty much it. As far as last week's coverage, doesn't seem a lot of stuff to cover. So I'm actually going to probably also cover Solana and Bitcoin and maybe Dogecoin if we have a chance here and and see what we have time to do. Um, I'm also going to probably do some quick thoughts before the charts uh, to talk about KuCoin. They're going KYC um, this week. And so probably, probably start covering maybe like two to three minutes worth of news as well. See if we can fit that in. But more importantly, maybe some KYC alternatives because I've had a lot of people ask me about <clears throat> some alternatives to KuCoin. And so we'll get into that. They're becoming less uh, less and less defined. Um, and there's there's a lot of crappy ones. There, there's some that I would recommend if it was just myself, but ones that I will not recommend and I won't even mention uh, because they're just, you could lose your money. Like literally, they could be scams. And I, I, don't, I don't trust them enough to share them you know it's it's one of those things like you have to do it on your own and i will i would never trade real money on it i would probably trade five percent or whatever anyway we'll get into that um so that's kind of the recap before all this i'm going to share a little bit about what i'm doing as well because i got a lot of stuff coming up and so that's pretty much going to be the summary for the video so let's just go ahead and get started all right, so first things first, let me just tell you about what I'm doing because I got a lot of stuff coming up. First thing is that I have a brand new Discord. It's called Nowhere HQ. It's been up for about two weeks now. I think this is week number two. And go ahead and sign up. It's it's on a lot of my a lot of my tweets that I've had. I've been posting about twice a week now. Um, but I'm gonna put it on the description here. Um, on the if this is a YouTube link, I'm gonna put it there. And I'll probably just put it in a pinned tweet as well. Uh, coming up this you know today or perhaps tomorrow and basically it's a it's a way for all everyone it's it's free a way for everyone to kind of communicate with me better because i've noticed that i try to grab dms from telegram from twitter things like that it's really hard to do so it's a way for <clears throat> everyone to kind of it's almost like an otsukimi branded community so to speak and i don't i don't like saying that because um, i'm trying to be humble about this but it's a way for you to talk to me about charts, uh, trading ideas, and it's for a way to share trade ideas that I have to you as well. A lot of those trade ideas are just me scan, uh, scanning the charts, and so I just share them. You know, and, I, and I've noticed that over. That's kind of how I started my brand, honestly. Like, and that's how most CT people did as well. Like, I just share my thoughts. People are interested in. So now this is more of a dedicated way to do that. And so you'll get trade ideas. You'll get. Um, You'll get one video a week about going over charts. You'll get another one video per week about requests. And so that's completely free. I do that completely out of my own time, my own will, everything like that. Um, in addition to that, there's also a trading challenge where I start with $30,000. I made $620 last week. So we, we're, we're into one week of that. So that, that's only about 2% relatively speaking, but um, it's okay. I've got two trades open right now and I'm... I'm up about 150 bucks, so not much, but overall, seven, eight hundred dollars for one week's worth of work. Um, that's that's okay, right? So, so anyway, well, I have that as well. I also got portfolio things, uh, tips, and things like that. So, in addition to that, there's also going to be right around August 1st, by the end of July, is I'm going to have a Nowhere HQ Premium, and that's going to be a paid version of the free nowhere version right and so you're going to get more videos you're going to get access to my some of my scripts perhaps um the trading challenge itself all those kind of ideas more it's going to be much more closer knit uh, much more content it's going to be about two to four two and eh, maybe about three times the content of what the free version is going to give you so that's kind of that as well um so that's that's just the discord in addition to that i have apex academy coming up also in april in, in august 1st that is a paid only thing that is that is just a it's, it's like a mentorship slash master class course and it's 12 weeks long 
and it's designed to kind of help you accelerate your learning. Um, if you, you, it's it's more so for beginners, I, w- I would probably say, or people that want to refine their content <clears throat> or their trading, I should say. And so it'll basically take you, it, it it'll basically share about 12 to 18 months worth of content in about 12 weeks. So that's that's the thing. It's it's meant to accelerate um, your your trading strategies and your thoughts and your processes about trading. So and if you, I know I know courses are kind of hard to sell. And it's not, I'm not trying to sell it per se. Um, but I've I've found a lot of value in my life with this. So that's kind of a way to do it. The last one, Apex Academy, first launched in December. And we did good. We had about 30 people. So that was pretty good for the first go around. So this is the second go around. This is also going to be something that I kind of do in perpetuity where we're going to keep, probably keep it open. Um, so, and we'll, we'll, I'll have a bunch more content about that later. In addition to that, so I've got the Discord, the Academy, and now I'm going to have my Avon Pro box. They're finally launching. They're going to launch also on August 1st. So I got a big launch coming up. Um, and those, those are going to be helpful. That's probably one of my most requested features is the bots. And um, I have a big wait list. Probably going to relaunch that wait list to get more people in. And you should see more content about that in future weeks. So um, today is July, was it July 10th? Yes, yeah, July 10th. So I got 20 more days to all this launches roughly. So we got a lot of stuff to cover. But anyway, that's what I got going on. Um, now I'm going to get into a little bit of the news with the KYC stuff, and then we'll get into the charts. All right, so I want to discuss a little bit, just two minutes, about KuCoin. So KuCoin is going to start going KYC as of July 15th, and contrary to popular belief, you basically won't be able to use it except to sell your sell your assets and withdraw. So that's, that's good. That's good that they kind of let you withdraw and, and get out of there, right? Um, however, that does put KYC on the platform, and that's unfortunate because K, uh, KuCoin was probably the number one altcoin exchange for quite some time and it's it's sad to see that it's going to get dethroned on this category i think it still will do well and i i hope it does do well um, because <clears throat> when i first started KuCoin was KuCoin was pretty much the top exchange i mean i mean cryptopia was i think um, and there were some other ones i mean bitrix was really good too honestly at, at the time bitrix was really good a lot of people kind of make fun of Bitrix now, but they were really, I would definitely say top three when I first started in 2017. And so, uh, you know, Bitrix went globe, you know, they, they got out of certain locations like me in the US. Um, and then <clears throat> uh, Cryptopia just went under. So KuCoin was the only one left. And now it's it's still going to be around. But it's going to have KYC. So that's, that is what it is. And so, um, if you are looking for alternatives, it's very hard actually to find alternatives. But there, there is three that I can recommend, or not, and I don't necessarily recommend per se, but there's three that come to mind because I've had people ask me about this. And the first one is, is Bing X. Now, I do want to preface this to say that I am a partner of Bing X. I don't say this because I am a partner, however. I say this because I have used them before. I used them when they were called Bing Bon, and I think I'm saying that right. And so I was with them during the rebranding, um, and so I like them because of the different types of uh, listings. They got over 600 there, which is it's, it's probably more than most people need. Um, they do have you know derivatives and things like that, so it, it really does help. They also have um, a copy trading platform. And, and all that. So it's really good. Um, I do have a link. I do have a referral link for this one. I don't have a referral link for the next two of these, but I do have one for this. If you want, you can sign up. If not, I don't really care. Honestly, this isn't a paid thing necessarily. Um, I do get commissions if you use it, but I am not doing this because of that reason. So anyway, that is the first one. Another one is one that I have not used pre- per myself, but is BitGet. I've heard a lot of good things about this. Um, I so for some of my clients, I do reviews, and so I've done reviews on exchanges, and this one seems like a pretty good one. I'm not sure how the market is as far as the <coughs> excuse me, 
as far as the the assets on here, things like that. But um, from what I've seen, it was it's a pretty good exchange. Um, and that's I don't have a ref link for this, so you just deal with that on your own. And the third one is Femex. Um, I'm kind of not as a fan of Femex as I used to be, and I think that's because of Bingx mainly. But um, I used to like Femex. I, I've tried it, and it, it's. I will say that one thing I don't necessarily like about Femex. I recommend it, but one thing I don't like is the way that you have to calculate margin is different than being X. And so if you've used, actually, if you've used margin on KuCoin, you will like the way that they do it on Femex. They do it very similarly. Um, they don't do it the same way on being X. So I don't actually know which one is the correct way to do it. I just know they do it very differently. And I'm so used to being X doing it, which is, a lot of other exchanges that I've worked with have done that as well. Um, there was, I think I used Bit7 at one point. At one point, um, so they do it very similarly. Where Femex does it, they they calculate it differently. So you just gotta watch out for that. But other than that, Femex is a very great um, exchange. I, I think it has just enough volume to get most of you guys in there. All right, so let's look at Bitcoin. And by the way, I am actually waiting. I might pause intermittently through the video. You won't see it as I edit it, but I'm waiting for some coffee to come in um, for my casual crypto and coffee coming up on Wednesday. So that's something I'm looking forward to. So let's go ahead and go to the weekly. I always look at Coinbase since it's the most well-rounded typically of all the exchanges. And we'll see what we got here. So first thing I, I usually go with, so usually the format is this. I look at kind of the overview of the coins. I look at key observations, hence the name of the title of the video series. And then I look at one long opportunity, one short opportunity, and then we kind of weigh those out. So, and so <clears throat> one thing that we can see here is that we had a, a bearish week, pretty easy to see, but we also had the pump up. And this is something um, you can, you'll be able to see this easier on the daily as we had it was it was this candle right here it went above so we had kind of a sweep of the highs and then we kind of went back down and we also there's two things to note one we had the high so we had a local high one two it rejected and made a low versus the candle so we have that bearish engulfing so that's a bit of a concern unfortunately if you are a bull that i think we're going to get a little bit more sideways at a minimum or downtrend um, at worst case scenario. So <clears throat> I think there's a few things to keep in mind over the weeks that we have talked about this. I have said that these impulses are usually a one and go scenario. They don't last weeks and weeks and weeks. And so we can see that here is like we had this big pump up and we had three more weeks before we had the second one. We had one pump up here, a pretty decent one here, but then we had pretty much a month until nothing else. And even after you count for this one, we had two months of bearish price action. So, but what I can just tell out of this is like, just because things, we, we can do this a few different ways, right? One, we can say this means a whole lot of nothing because this meant a whole lot of nothing and so did this, right? So we need to understand that this is more of a sub-trend context versus a main trend context. That's the first thing. Second thing is we need to just be patient and wait for a proper move that we want um, if you are a bull and i i am i think there's still a good reason to be bullish um, i'm gonna go ahead and put on my color script here and things are still bullish for me as long as this is blue it's pretty good one thing we can see and this is the band is based off the aaron and based on the aaron we can see that we're going into a bearish consolidation now this is a pretty high one and so we are up here at about the 90 percent range versus the 65% range. So that's about, so eight candles, so about eight weeks of potential bearish price action between this range, between this candle basically. And you could probably, actually you probably, Aaron does the highs, so probably within this box. So we could spend potentially eight weeks within this box. And that's, is worth noting because 99% of people will get, they will get bored. They will try to over leverage. They will try to cash out and just forget about the charts. And that's, that's critical because that's what we did here for two months. And that eight weeks is basically two months again. So we could have basically 
the same thing over again. A lot of people got bored and then they started along after it was way too late. Okay. And so that's something on the daily we looked at is we had, you know, and I even mentioned this, we had this wedge that we had the fake out, the pump back up. That was your signed along. Once you get a wedge, and this is pretty much so standard across the board. Once you get a broke breakdown of a falling wedge and then a break back up again, your time was actually to long here, but I would have understood if you waited to long here. So that's, that's a clear sign to me. And this based off of this liquidity area as well. So that was very crystal clear. Once we got this, that was my time to long. I, I, I long somewhere in here. I don't remember exactly, but that's, that's what that looks like. So let's go back to the weekly and, but we see everything else looks fine. We got the bounce off the 50 a weeks ago, almost a month ago. Everything looks okay. we got this gap right here, which is, which is pretty good. You want a gap between this black line and the blue line, the blue uh, shaded area. That's typically when you get something like this. So when you get the green dot plus the gap. So we'll see how that goes. Um, that's kind of how these start out too, but we'll see. I, I can't verify that per se. That's just what I'm looking for. And I, I say that to say, don't get discouraged because we get one little bitty small bearish candle. Okay. <clears throat> I think, I think it's really insignificant in the long run. And two, it's a good way to get you distracted from a major move. Um, overall, that's about it. We can look at a few different things here. We can look at this from these two candles here at like so. So we're kind of at a good area of resistance. There's there's nothing unusual about this necessarily, right? Um, this is where resistance should be. Um, we got a very, and, 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 and technically we've had you know, three going on our fourth you know rejection right here, but this isn't a big rejection. And I, I said this one or two videos ago as well, depending on how fierce the rejection is, is how we should treat how bearish this is. And so far, we haven't gotten a good bearish rejection just yet. I mean, this is not this is not a good bearish rejection, and we can see this on the daily. This is a this is a consolidation period, and so this is why I'm still bullish here. I think there's plenty of reason to still be bullish. All right, so let's <clears throat> go over the daily now, and we can have what we have here. We can identify basically the the top of the line here. So we we've, we've identified this previously in. in other videos right and so what we can see here is we gathered a, a run up we had a, a touch up so we we went to a new high we had that rejection that's what we saw on the weekly <clears throat> but we still have this like little push here and so with that being said we could we could keep this was it where does it go there it is we can keep this here but we're going to go ahead and get rid of it because it's probably better just to look at this from a, a range here. And so now I, we can look at this in two ways. I've, I've seen this interpreted by great traders in multiple ways as well. We can look at the highs <clears throat> and calculate that's the highs and lows and calculate in that into an order block. The problem is we have a sweep here of the lows and we have a sweep here of the highs. So we would have to adjust that. Now I don't, I don't particularly do that. I don't think that that's good trading methodology to do that. I think a better way to do that is just to target the candle bodies instead. <clears throat> and so we have this one up here and we have this one right here, which happens to match um, both of these. So this is a much more clear understanding to me because we're, we're dealing with a daily time frame. Um, so wicks in these situations don't matter as much to me as they probably should and and that's okay um we can we can look at this at a different angle though because we also have a bearish divergence here's the divergence and then we have a lower low with the rsi so <clears throat> the bears take precedence right here and so that's the key observation that i have for bitcoin that's probably my number one key observation for bitcoin is we have a divergence and a failure of the highs and so with that being said we can look at this as we can expect more bearish price action if we get it, if we get it. So the idea is I'm going to look at this as a short opportunity 
first. And so what I do is, as you guys all know, I wait for the break of a range. So we have to have price action break below. That's where we would enter our short. I'd probably, to be safe, target something like so. I could also target the mid just above these this double top here. And I could either target right here which at this at this area or I could target right here where this bullish engulfing is and so that gives us about 2.43 that's pretty good problem is that's a, a touch of 26.8 might feel a little bit hard to achieve and if it does it might take a little bit longer to get there so <clears throat> I just want you to keep that in mind but overall this looks good to me um, other than that we could do a long opportunity, but I don't really see one right now. Honestly, the best one would probably be right now at a market position and have your stop under here, under the lows, something like so. And then you could target, let's say, I don't know, 34, 35, something like that. You don't have to target that high. I mean, you could target lower or whatever you want, right? But either way, that's probably gonna give you at least a three R and that's gonna be still a better opportunity. And that's not fair to say that because the sky's the limit, right? But if I was going to long this, I, on this kind of, you know, order block scenario, this is where I would long it. So that being said, I don't have a higher conviction in longs right now because we have this divergence. So that's, that's the observations that I see on, on Bitcoin on the daily. Let's go ahead and zoom in to the four hour and we can kind of see where this is kind of coming up in context we got just a series of chop and that's okay where i can take this order block and kind of go like so we had the sweep and then um yeah and i don't really like sweeps per se they don't i don't think they work as good as everybody thinks that they do um i think if you go through history maybe that's another video but if you go throughout price action you'll find that sweeps don't tend to be as effective as they usually are so that's I, the problem is is you'll you'll always see a sweep at the highs but people don't look at the sweeps anywhere else so if i would skim like pretty much every candle i could see a lot of sweeps right but the problem is you're always going to find a sweep at the highs and that's that's not fair that's confirmation bias so anyway another video for that i'm sure so so this is your range and again a break of the range I do know based off experience, however, if you see a consolidation move like this, that's typically a bullish sign. That sets up the whole precedence for this. And so this to me is much more reaccumulative in its pattern than anything else. And we're already kind of seeing a little bit of an uptrend, not very much, it's not significant right now. But I would not be surprised if we just went like this. You know, I would not be surprised if we did that. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. That's more of a guess. But it's also worth noting that that was pretty much the long setup that I have. So something like so. So that's a good option. That's probably another worthwhile observation. I do know when we get kind of like a triple top like this, that's, that's usually a good sign as well. So anyway, that's Bitcoin. We're going to go ahead and go to Ethereum. If we've got time, we'll visit Solana first. And then we'll visit Binance and then maybe Dogecoin, but I doubt Dogecoin. So we'll go ahead and keep going. All right. So now we're on to Ethereum, going to the weekly again. And the thing we see is we got that same that same um, touch of the highs engulfing to, towards the lows on Ethereum as we did with Bitcoin. One thing you know that it's a little bit stronger than Bitcoin. That's another observation that I've done uh, throughout the, really the past month is that Bitcoin is going to be stronger than alts they're, they're going to they're going to um, more so not go down as much as others and that's one thing I want to look at is every time you look at these charts you can almost always see that Bitcoin is much less sensitive to everything else you know it's only up half a percent while everything else potential is either up like almost five percent or you know down like two percent or whatever and it just it just depends right we got I mean that's a short position technically so um, very, just very various ones. Oh, that went up 7%. I was, I was looking at this one to buy and I did not. So, um, that was, that was a divergence that looked pretty good. So anyway, different story. 
going to Ethereum, going to the weekly. So we see that we see that playing out. We still got almost a full week to go, so we can't judge this current candle, right? So one thing that I notice is that we have this liquidity area, and this is something I've drawn for pretty much every time. Got the touch, got the deviation, got the consolidation below. So that's kind of like a bullish rejection, kind of, so to speak. It's kind of an oxymoron, but we're still hovering around here. So that's good. As long as we hold this little trend line, I think that we're still bullish enough, at least to to target the $2,000 range and beyond. I think if we can break above that, we actually can get to about 2,500, which is right here. Um, we also have the Aaron bullish consolidation. And if you notice, we've had that ever since this candle and we've had, excuse me, we've had that consolidation inside the top part of that. So that confirms that bullish consolidation. Our size is about 50. Everything's pretty clean. Like I said, it's like with Bitcoin, like this rejection was so small and insignificant for the past week. And if that's all that the bears could do last week, that's still pretty good, right? For if you're a bullish person right now um, and I still think that that's look you can be bull bear I don't really care that doesn't offend me and so don't don't ever tell don't ever don't ever take offense to me being a bull or a bear by the way it's just my reflections and then my observations I welcome alternative ideas because it helps you see the market and maybe you can see something differently I mean this trading is dynamic right <clears throat> um, I think if you have a strict, you know, two plus two is gonna equal four, right? So there's some things out there that you have to have hard facts about. Trading, however, is dynamic because there's multiple ways to make money, right? Um, so anyway, that's that. And that's what I see here on on the weekly. So pretty, pretty standard. Um, I mentioned, so this is the daily now. I mentioned on the daily that this is a little bit uh, how should I say like it, it's just not my cup of tea right so we had this this is the deviation rejection and we're still having a couple failures to get above so we're kind of working on that right and so there's a few different ways you can obviously look at it from here but that's too high um, another way that we could do it is looking at it through here and so we did kind of reject but not good you know not not close enough right so that's the thing I'm still I'm still bearish this is hard to explain because i'm i'm still bullish on the, the high time frame right but overall this is not something that i want to long like as a short swing or a scalp because this is way too choppy of that kind of behavior i would much rather focus on maybe the weekly and so here's what i would probably do um so this is kind of like the key observation about this is focus on the weekly with ethereum versus any other time frame because that's where you're going to see the most information right so um what i do is i'm going to mark this out and see if we can does that does that bleed over so like right here so we can do i don't i don't really think a long idea is a bad one right here um you might have to target something like so i like this because this is technically a deviation on this time frame so you can kind of go with that, right? Um, and I guess it doesn't want to show up there. But we could use that same target as 25 and go there. So it's a 2.4, 2.5. So not not the best considering what we're trying to do. It's still a good R value. Um, another thing that you could probably do as a second long opportunity is maybe it can target down at the lows. And then t use the same stop loss and same profit area i do like this as a stop loss because when you get mainly because it's crossed this red line when you get across like that and it deviates back above that's usually good when i i say this with almost absolute certainty like 99.99 percent .99 of the time when you get a deviation a, a deviation is a good sign that the price will not come back to that point generally speaking and so I use that quite a bit. They're very good at, I think they're even better at doing, deviations are much better at interpreting a sweep than a sweep, if that makes sense. I'm not a big fan of the term sweep, sweep the highs, sweep the lows, um, because it doesn't really tell you anything. It just tells you what you want to see 
off of what you believe about the highs and lows. I, I, I'm not convinced that the majority of the people trading Bitcoin and Ethereum care about sweeping the highs or sweeping the lows. I don't, I honestly don't think that the majority of traders are looking at the order book charts and saying, oh gosh, they swept the highs, now it's time to, now it's time to short, or they swept the lows, now it's time to long. I don't think that's the case. I just, now that's based off of more intuition and personal feeling, so to speak. Not personal feeling, but you know what I mean. And so it isn't based off hard technical analysis and that's why I kind of I don't really hold sweeps to much value because you can interpret that differently right you only see, like like this this is a great example this was a sweep this was a sweep of the highs uh, and we did close bullish so that was one thing to consider but this was also a sweep at the time and so we both went bullish so I don't know I don't know what what, what are you trying to tell me you know, that, that doesn't make sense to me, right? Versus the deviation pattern, which we are still underneath. After after four months, we are still under that deviation versus the two sweeps that we had. So to And I know those aren't perfect sweeps if you're really into those, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like, you have to do a lot more searching and um, gymnastics to cater to these sweeps versus a deviation see what i'm saying so that's I, i'm just saying i feel like deviations are much better at interpreting what sweeps are trying to tell you anyway so anyway enough of that those are the two long scenarios so let's go ahead and get rid of those and let's see the the short option is probably let's see let's see if i can get this visible on the four hour there we go, four. All right, so the short option would be, see this would be difficult because, so I'm not exactly short. I'm, I'm not exactly long because I want to get above the $2,000 range, but I'm not exactly short because there's no opportunity necessarily. I mean, you could, I would not say the short now because we're at the top of this. I mean, I guess you could. And if you did short now, there's not really see this is this would be where I want to go, but you're so close to the resistance, so you could get a top, you could get a touch up here. So there's no real there's no real opportunity. But even if you did this, which I don't recommend, and you target here, now you got barely a two. That's that's a very hard two to accomplish. So I don't I wouldn't recommend that necessarily. If you go down here, the problem is if you go down here, now you're too close to the trend line, so you could get a bounce. That's exactly where I just told you along. So that doesn't make sense either. The best thing to do would be wait for a long up here, short at this, and then do something like so. So that's still your, that's still a two basically, but that's a much easier two. The problem is that that's also a speculative one as well. So there's no real good short opportunities. I think the best bet would be for you to wait for a long. The the best short opportunity that makes the most sense is a drop of this trend. So something like so, target this right here, and then target something like here. You still have roughly that two, depending on where you where you want to put this, right? But it's much more defined, I should say. Again, it's it's not something that I would personally do. I would still look for longs. I would still look for places to buy, because I think this is long ter long term. I'm focused on spot buys. We also have an A room bear bullish consolidation, like I said on the weekly, so that plays into it as well. So anyway, those are the observations for Bitcoin and Ethereum and my short and long opportunities. Let's go ahead and do Sol, and then I'll tag on Binance at the very end, and then we'll end the video. All right, let's go over Solana, <clears throat> and then we will finish this out. All right, so weekly on Solana, we had a bullish candle, actually. Um, this is one one that I talked about on, on Twitter and on Nowhere Discord. Uh, for a little bit and we'll see more on the daily in the context that it presents but we basically had this big trend line that broke out and it's good i still think that this is a very good insight i think that the daily will show you better but we do have a rejection here at the 50 we need to break that first we have the bullish consolidation on the Aaron. if we go on the daily you'll see that trend line that i'm talking about and so that was very good very key we had that we had that um 
push upward we have this trend line support so to speak retest i usually don't hold much weight to those that was kind of accidental actually um so i'll just get rid of that but that also bears in mind what we have going on here um so as far as a key observation for solana the big thing is when you have a trend line like this it tends to run numbers okay so don't when you have a big trend like this you can't just ignore it so to speak um so one thing i would do is even if even if you just want to blind long now the best option would probably be something like so that would be a little bit riskier but that's still worth it that's a really good solid six um, another thing that you could do we'll just kind of copy and paste that we'll kind of slide this over here and then go like so another thing that you could do is maybe something here past this little rejection point here and so that gives you about 3.7 possibly 4 depending on how you adjust that so that's okay not not super not super high but it's good enough and i think you know, obviously you can double the risk triple the, whatever you want to do right and so in these situations i do tend to double the risk because they don't happen very much so that's kind of what i see um and i don't think i'll go into the four hour because it kind of tells you the same thing we have this local rejection here so that's one thing to consider so we are kind of in this this area right here so this is the area of interest i have that's also where the two um entries would be so somewhere somewhere in between here would be where i place the entries anywhere you'd probably want perhaps so you could probably cut up your position into, into two and trade accordingly so anyway that's the video uh solano's gonna be very short um, but i'm running the video a little long today so i kind of want to end it that's my observations for that that's the video i hope you enjoyed it i'll see you next time